the Unity editor can help you with many, many things, but there will come a time when you will want to implement your own custom logic or the logic for your game. And for that, you need to learn scripting. What we'll do in this lesson is get started with scripting, which is the same as programming or coding or however you want to call it, using the C Sharp programming language. I've created a new project here and the very first thing that I'm going to do is create a folder for my scripts. So I'm going to right click, go to create folder and I'm going to call this folder scripts. Inside of that folder, I'm going to create my very first first script. So I'm going to go to create and select C sharp script. That is C and the hash sign script. I have to enter the name of my script now and the convention is to start with a capital letter so I'm going to call this hello and then world also W will be in a capital letter that's just how people write their names of their scripts so I'm going to press enter and that has created a new script for us if you select that script here you can already see the source code of the script on this in the inspector window to open your script double click on it in my case, that will open the script in Visual Studio, which is the officially recommended editor for Windows. If you are on a Mac, the script will be open in a program called MonoDevelop that works in a very similar way. Maybe by the time you watch this, um, Visual Studio for Mac will be out and you'll be able to use Visual Studio as well. So we've opened our script and if you've never done any programming before, this can seem like a very strange thing. What what does this all mean? And even if you have done programming, but you haven't done any C sharp, this um, might also look pretty strange. So I'm going to start by deleting this whole part here, this whole part that says void update and those brackets. So I'm going to remove all of that and just keep this stuff here. And what I'm going to do next, I'm going to explain what this is in very simple terms with non-technical term usage and then we can move up from there and start adding some code and now we can explain what this is so the best way to understand programming and this is programming in general is to think of a cooking recipe so in a cooking recipe you have different steps for example if you want to make pasta the first step is to uh, boil the water and then you need to add the pasta and then let's say that you need to um, steer. So you have different instructions and they can all be understood in human language, in basic terms, and they all need to perform, be performed at a certain order. So it goes from top to bottom. Um, the same thing happens with programming. You're basically issuing statements that the computer needs to execute and they are also executed from top to bottom. Let's say that we have the full recipe of pasta here and we might want to use that recipe in different meals or in different events. So for example, you could have some sort of, some sort of dinner, a dinner party or something where you need to make the pasta. And let's say that you also need to make a dessert. So that is another recipe. So this recipe can be put in in what would be called a method and that method could be called something like make pasta so every time that you want to make pasta you just use the method make pasta and that method has all these instructions so when you're preparing your dinner you don't have to type each one of them do this one um, write this down you just say just make the pasta and you already have the instructions to make the pasta so if we now go to this code here, we are going to start from the inside to the outside, making sense of everything. All of these instructions, they are, they are very clear steps, would go, let's say, here. This start text, it is a method. So it would be something like, for example, the make pasta it could be start. and this green text here that says use this for initialization is a comment. That is a comment for humans to read. So whatever is um, preceded by these two signs 
is a comment for the programmer to read. The computer is going to ignore this. So what we have here, we will have instructions here. And those instructions are put inside of a method. In this case, the start method. Now, what do these brackets mean? The brackets, these the, uh, curly brackets, are used to put everything together, like the same the same thing that you have a, a burger and you have a bum on the top and a bum on the bottom and then you have your burger here and lettuce and all the other things. So think of the brackets as that those the, the bum that goes on the top and at the bottom. So you always need to need things need to be within a certain um, space scope. So that is what these brackets mean. What if we go um, one step even further. So at this point, we, we kind of have an idea of what this is. Basically, start is a method. But what about this class? This, uh, this is a class and it's called Hello World. We gave it that name. A class is, um, think of a class as like a Lego block. Think of the class as a Lego block. So you have a block that is almost like a Lego piece that you can use in different parts. So you could have you could have one, uh, for example, one character in your game that is going to use this hello world and it's going to do something. And then you could have some other character in, in the same game that uses that same component. So that is what a class is. Think of it as some sort of block that can be reused. And again, the, the brackets here are doing the same function as the burger bumps in the top and at the bottom. Then what about this top part here? Well, all this is, since we said that this was like a piece of Lego, this would be other pieces of Lego that other people created that we are using in our script. In particular, this one that says Unity Engine, it gives us access to the whole Unity API. And these other two are part of the, the C Sharp programming language. It's created by Microsoft. And this is part of the, it's called the .NET framework. So those are just tools that come with the programming language that we can use. And when we create, so let's go back to Visual Studio, when we create a new script in Unity in this way, this is created for us automatically. This start method is the instructions that we put inside here, for example, uh, boil the water or uh, things like that, they will be uh, like it says here, they will be used at the beginning for in initialization. When our game starts and the very first frame is shown on the screen, that is when the start method takes uh, is executed. And the last part that hasn't been mentioned is this mono behavior thing here. So we will cover all of this in in uh, in later lessons. But for now, just think that this all this does it just gives us the this type of the the fact that we can use the start like that. It comes from here. So this gives us access to Unity's way of working with things and connect to, with the Unity game itself. So that would be a very, very general, basic um, way of looking at programming and scripts. Now, what can we do in our start method? When people learn how to code, usually they like to do what's called a hello world, which is when you just say hello to the world. So what we will do is just show the text, hello world. For that, we can use, uh, we can if we type print, we can show something on the screen. And what is it that we want to print? We need to write a message. So what I want to write is a message that says, hello world. Whoops, hello world. But this kind of feels weird because see how it's kind of underlined the words. And that is because when you are going to write a text, what's called a string, you need to use these quotes. So we are going to print hello world on the screen and see how it's still, um, it's still showing us this red line. It means there's something it doesn't like. And it is because we are missing a semicolon. Whenever you type this type of statements, you have to put the semicolon at the end. So we have now a little script, which all it does, it will say hello world at the beginning of the game. So let's, let's go back to Unity and see how we can make this actually happen. Um, when a game begins, that is when you press play. So I'm going to press play. And 
I'm not going I'm not seeing any hello world anywhere. So why is that? It's because in order for a script to actually do something, you need to put it in your game. You need to uh, assign it to a game object. So you need to create a game object or use exist an existing game object and give it the script so that then the script has life and actually runs when the game runs. So what I'm going to do now is create an empty game object because we don't really want to show anything. I just need a game object here. A game, an empty game object only has the transform component. So it's not shown. It doesn't have a re uh, render component. It doesn't have a material. And I'm going to rename this and call it just a hello space world. That's just going to be its name. And there are different ways of assigning a script to a game object. One of them is by simply dragging the script all the way to the game object. And that will make it appear here as a component. I can remove the component by going here, remove component. So another way would be to click add component and then find scripts and find that hello world. So that's another way of adding it. So now that the script has been assigned in our game, we can actually play our game and you will see the hello world. So let's play the game. And you can see down here, hello world. If you go here next to project to console, the console is an area that we use to communicate with the script in the sense that we can send ourselves messages such as this. And also, if there's any error in your code, it will be displayed here. Uh, see that hello world entry. If I click on it and then I go down here, it will tell me the exact location of that message. In this case, the file is called hello world.cs and the line is number nine. So if you go to the file, which is by the way called hello world.cs, that is the extension for C sharp scripts. And if you go all the way to line number nine, we can see our message. So that is how you can create a script and assign it to an object. And what we'll do in the next lesson is make this a bit more interesting and add the introduce the concept of variables so that we can actually pass on things to our scripts. So before you go to the next lesson, I have a very simple challenge for you. The challenge consists on creating a new script and assigning that script to a game object. The script, all it needs to do is say hello to yourself on the console. So you can write anything you want on the script. Once you complete the challenge, you can join us on the next lesson.